Hello everyone and welcome to another Minecraft update video. This is 1.19 pre-release number 2 and if you were expecting our regular Monday episode of Hermitcraft, well I anticipated this pre-release and thus it was published on my channel yesterday. Now this new update comes to us with some messaging about future changes that are not going to be a part of 1.19 but they involve nether portals, mob farms and you know how this community reacts to these sorts of changes. It's going to be tricky business but I'm going to explain to you in this video what exactly is going on. But first of all some changes with the warden which is supposed to angrily despawn if it gets stuck in liquid but this is all that happened to me. It would just vanish rather than doing its digging animation. It has also been noticed that damageless projectiles like the snowball wouldn't anger the warden and so now I've made the bad life choice to throw several snowballs at this chap here. And another very important warden related issue that's been fixed, the persistence require tag is now working correctly, meaning that if you name tag one of these wardens they are not going to despawn. Now if you watched my last pre-release video you may remember there were some changes made with the generic equipping sound for items that you can put on your head. As you'll see here, the other equipping sounds are still present, but for these ones there is no sound now, however it does still activate the skulk sensor. And if we take a look at the bug reports on the website, I think you can see why this change was reverted. There's like 10 or 12 individual bug reports all related to this change, so it's just been rolled back. There is also a new game event for the Skulk Sensor, allowing it to detect when entities teleport. So let's go and eat this Chorus Fruit. And that time it didn't work. And that time it did work. Let's do this one more time. Uh-huh, it activated. And I think you get the point. There we go. This will also work for the Enderman, and the other teleport event is the Shulker. Fortunately, that Enderman teleported back over here so I could confirm that this worked, and let's teleport again. And as you can see, we've got a rather large signal strength. Let's now do that again. Now, according to the website, this is supposed to be a vibration frequency of 5. But let's see what we get. Yeah, a full 15 from this thing. Hey, that might change in pre-release number 3. There are other new events for the Skulk Sensor too, like waxing a block of honey and then stripping it too. You can also strip a log of its bark and all three of those were signal strength 7. There is also the act of tilling dirt, turning grass into a path, harvesting a fully grown berry bush, placing food onto a campfire. All of those are signal strength 7 and if you throw an eye of ender, well it didn't detect it that time, let's try again. Aha, you can see signal strength 15. So a snow golem creating a snow layer is going to be detected, as you can see right there. And this event seems to give off signal strength 13, but sometimes lower? I think sometimes it detects its footsteps, and other times it detects the snow layer being placed. So villagers placing crops will now activate it, however this is a bit of a pain because it does all sorts of other things that activate it too. The act of putting a record disc in a jukebox and then taking it out, both of these are signal strength 7. And I feel like maybe I never mentioned this when the music disc was added, but this is the 15th one added to the game and it has signal strength 15 when in a jukebox. Now cauldron snow and dripstone filling up a cauldron can now activate the skulk sensor. And since I can't speed it up with the random tick speed, I think I'll just skip this one. Now before we get to the mob spawning changes, there are two things that I missed from last week's snapshot and one of those is that swapping items between your hands no longer sets off a skulk sensor. The other was related to this advancement, it spreads which has been moved behind the monster hunter achievement. And when it comes to bug fixes in this pre-release that I haven't mentioned, that's because they're just minor small gameplay details that are broken and then just been corrected again. So let's now talk about the changes from the last pre-release and what's going to change in the future. So Wither Skeletons, Enderman and Skeleton can now spawn in light level 11 in the nether where they used to require light level 0. This allows them to spawn in many more places in the nether which is commonly lit up by its light sources like fire and lava but another place that these mobs will now be able to spawn is inside of the portal frame block which of course emits light. And when a mob spawns in one of these places, it's instantly teleported to the overworld. And the reason that one didn't go through is because there wasn't a portal on the other side generated yet. So as you can see, a mob can spawn in this frame and immediately teleport across. 
And because nether portals can be made very large, you can see the potential here for farms to be created, where the mobs will naturally spawn inside of the portal and instantly get moved over to the overworld. Then of course here in the overworld you have all of the mobs in one place ready to be killed and that's how you can make powerful farms with this technology. And so let's read what Mojang have to say about this. Important to note is that a recent change made it possible for more types of mobs to spawn inside of nether portals which caused them to instantly change dimensions after spawning. We will not be making further changes to this before the release of 1.19, but our intent for the future is to prevent most mobs from spawning in nether portals and that ones that do will not immediately travel through the portal. Expect to see these changes in a coming version. So I think that communication is really important and I hope this is the beginning of more communication as the statement is a little bit ambiguous in places. Like this doesn't really say is it going to be soon as in 1.19.1 or in 1.20. I think we need some clarification on that front. And then I think we're also going to need some well stated reasoning for these changes too as there have been farms you can build with portals in this game for a long long time. I myself have built a ginormous gas farm in the past using tons and tons of portals where the gas will happily spawn inside of and get transported to the overworld. And it's definitely overpowered and perhaps a little bit on the cheaty side. It's also been in the game for a long time so I think there needs to be some clear communication about why they want to remove this. But what's kind of annoying is that now possibly between 1.19 and 1.20 you'll be able to build similar farms for wither skeletons, regular skeletons and endermen and then that will be taken away from us. I really think it'd be much better just to revert the changes from the last pre-release with the light levels for these mobs and then make a full and proper change in 1.20 but that's just my opinion. So hopefully you understand the changes and of course let me know what you think about this with a comment down below. And so that's everything to do with this pre-release of course make sure you're subscribed if you want to catch the next ones coming out on this channel in the coming days. But that's it, thanks for watching and I'll see you later, bye bye.